now that you've got all these different things on and you're looking a little bit more presentable, be well groomed, your hair, everything, the small details count. You know, it's your watch, it might be, it might be a pen that you might use, choose a nicer pen. Don't use the cheap, you know, $5 big pen, right? Try to look more professional. You are, you're a consultant, you're a coach, you're a business owner, represent your company well. The next tip, this is all about distractions. What you don't want are distractions in the background. The number one thing that you can do, let me just share my screen here. The first thing you can do is to post a do not disturb. You can go online, do a Google search, do not disturb meeting in progress sign printable. And you can print any one of these signs and stick it outside your door. I have two kids, they're between the age of nine and 10. And because of that, sometimes they will come and knock on my door or my wife might come and knock on my door. Guess what? I actually put that sign out there and I've trained my family to know that if they see that and they can hear, come to the door and listen, if they can hear me speaking in a meeting, they should not enter. They can do a very light knock on the door. And if I do not respond to them, it means I'm very engaged. I might be recording a video. Do not disturb. On the other hand, I might be on a Zoom call and many times what I might do is I might just mute out. I just muted out there. And so then what I might do is I might mute out and I might say, now what you can also do if you do do that is to make sure you put your camera, turn off your camera, maybe put a note in the chat to your other colleagues and say, be right back, someone's at my door. And then you just do this. Now don't forget to mute your mic while you do this because you'll otherwise everyone will be hearing you and you'll be stepping over everyone when you go, Yes, come in. Oh, honey, don't worry about it. I'll take the garbage out later. You don't want to do that. So make sure if you're going to pick your nose, if you're going to put food in your mouth, once again, turn off your camera, mute your mic. That is common courtesy on Zoom calls. Next, in terms of distractions, if you take a look at my background, now this is a very critical tip. This, this is probably going to be one of the best tips for you as a business owner, as a coach or a consultant. If you notice, my background is actually very staged. I have this bookshelf. I've invested a lot of money probably close to about $20,000 in books over here. And I do that strategically. Now this is very specific for anyone who is actually in my space, especially in the entrepreneurial space, in the digital marketing space, you will notice that my books are not just randomly put up here. They are strategically lined up in a certain way. I've got leadership books up there. I've got sales books over here. I've got business books, business mindset books on how to scale companies. I've got communication books up there and I've got management books. I've even got e-commerce books over here. I've got uh, you know, internet marketing books. I've got HR books up there. They're all done very strategically. Depending on who I'm going to get on a call with, I will actually rearrange my bookshelf. For example, this traction up here, and I know exactly where it is. Say I'm speaking with a business owner, a visionary who is actually looking at scaling their company, but they're struggling because they don't really have that right COO or operations or integrator person with them. Well, I will bring up the topic about EOS system and having that integrator. There's the book Rocket Fuel above it, and then there's Traction, which you can actually see, by the way, I did make another video and I talked about these books. So you can click the I button over here and go over there. I did some, I do book reviews on this channel, so you can go check out those books. I do a lot of these books on book reviews. You can find out which are the best books, even Never Split the Difference, it's in there. Extreme Ownership, it's in there. Chet Holmes, Ultimate Sales Machine, is in that book review. So go check it out, not right now, after this video, and then after that, I will tell you why and how I use those books. Now, the reason these books are on the shelves here is because what it allows me to do is when I'm in the meeting, I will then recommend a book to them. Or many times they'll come on and they'll say, wow, Desmond, it looks like you've read a lot of books. And I'll say, yes, I do. I've, I've read a lot of books, but I'll tell them a story because we all know facts tell stories sell. Now, I'm in the business of closing. I do a lot of closing, whether it's deal making, whether it's with clients, whether it's B2B, whether it's coaching, whether it's consulting, I do a lot of closing. And the way I do it is in a very, it's, it's, in, a, it's in a storytelling way. So I will normally tell about my mentor. His name is Dan Locke. Many people know of Dan Locke. I've worked with Dan for many, many years. And when I first met Dan, I was not really that much of a reader. In fact, I struggled reading books. You know, I would read maybe one book a month at best. And after that, Dan would test me on that. And you say, Desmond, you know, what would you get out of the book or what did you implement? And I would say, uh, I, I, you know, I could tell him some parts of the book, but I couldn't really tell him what I implemented. And so then he taught me this concept. And actually, Dan's got a great video on that. In fact, click the I button up here. And it says how he uses books. He doesn't read books. He uses books. That was part of the lesson that happened with me. 
And Dan said, Desmond, when you read a book, what you want to do is you want to go into the book and find one to three things that you can go and implement. If you can do that, the book has already done its part. You don't need to read the entire book from cover to cover. You just need to close the book, go implement, produce a result, and the book has already returned its value. It's ROI, it's already been achieved. You can always come back to the book, open it up, continue reading, find two or three more things, close the book and go implement. Now, I purposely use that story because when I'm working with individuals and I'm closing them on maybe getting started with a program, uh, a coaching program, you know, a, a, a course that they might need to take, I always tell them it's not about you taking the course, no different than a book, right? It might be a six day live event that I'm actually talking to them about, but if they come to the event and they can't, maybe they're busy, they say, Desmond, I'm a busy business owner and I can't attend the six day live event that you're doing. Okay, I'm not asking you to attend all six days, I'm asking you to attend at least one day. Find one thing that you can implement with your business, close and go implement. If you produce a result, then the cost of your ticket has already been covered. Do you notice how I use my background, particularly the books? One, for to position myself as an authority. Two, I use it actually in the call. It's a prompt. So sometimes you can do that. Now, I'm gonna also put in the description below, there's another video that you can check out. It's done by Angie. Angie's got some great tips similar to lighting, but she also talks about how she's got a certain set, a certain background that she keeps really clean. The rest of her room is a mess. Most of us YouTubers are like that. What you see on camera is actually the clean stuff. On the other side is actually a mess. But you guys saw in the other video how my room actually looked. So hopefully that makes sense for each and every one of you. If you're liking these tips, comment below. Let me know if these tips are helping you out. Next tip. Now this comes down to sound quality. In YouTube, especially in the online space, you can have videos that have poor lighting, even bad camera. But the one thing that the audience will never ever forgive you on is poor sound so pay attention to this part you want to take some time to probably invest in some good audio equipment notice how the sound changed now i'm using a lavalier mic it's meant for the phones it's a rode microphone that i can use i'll post a link in the bottom here it, it's been around for several years you can do this as a lavalier mic if you're recording videos if you're joining a zoom call many times there's going to be a lot of background noise around your house there might even be some echo in your room you notice how they echo. So what I do is I just use some simple iPhone headphones here. You plug it in and all of a sudden now your sound becomes clearer. It, well, this is all messy. Make sure your, your cables and cords are not all tangled up like this, but you, you can even have that. And being on a call, now, do you notice how this looks kind of goofy? You're having this, this kind of cables and cords and stuff like that. You got to deal with that. So here's what I do. We do as a closer or as a coach or a consultant, we actually have headsets. Headset. Now this is a Sennheiser. It's a Bluetooth. It's one of the top of the line models. You don't have to get it. You can get many others, but here's what you don't want to do. You don't want to get, go down to the local Best Buy or just go on Amazon and buy one of those, you know, those big giant, they look like air traffic controller ones. I'm sure you've seen them. You see these gamers, they have them all the time. If you're a professional, especially like myself, I'm dressed up in a suit and I had that. You just looks, it just looks awkward and looks goofy. I see people do that all the time and it looks really bad. Now, this is actually what professionals use. It's very comfortable to use. It's got all kinds of functions. I'll actually post a link in the link below and I'll, I'll give you some other options as well too. There's Habra, there's also Plantronics. They're all very competitive. It's almost kind of like the Mercedes, the BMW and the Audi. They're all very competitive and they're all very, very top of the line. So I highly encourage you to take these, take a look at this. Now, if you can't afford one of these things, maybe you're running on a budget. There are other ones you can get with a cable, USB, just plug it in. But what ideally you want to do is a low profile. You don't want it to be too big. I even have a second one here, which was actually one of my original first ones here. You can see this. And this was a single earpiece. Depends on what you like. Some people, they don't like the double earpiece and hearing their own voice in their ears. You get used to it eventually though. After a week of calls, you get used to it. But I was used to using the single earpiece. The only problem with these smaller ones was that the battery didn't last as long. This one was probably about a, a five hour uh, life pen. This is a 10 hour lifespan on it. And it's a newer model. This one also, the one I'm using currently, also has the Bluetooth to my phone. It can pick up the telephone line back there. It's actually connected to the telephone line. So if I get a telephone call that comes in, I can actually switch calls on here. There's so many different functions. So just check out the link in the link below. Get good sound. If you can't get good sound, this, I'm telling you, when you're actually on a closing call, everything comes down to your tonality, the way you breathe, when you're listening intently to what your client's saying and you're writing down, mm -hmm, okay. Just a moment, let me write that down, that's important. 
everything counts. So you want to make sure that your sound is great. Your background, your lighting, the way you look, the grooming. Another tip I want to give you as well as a professional, though I did mention at the other part of the video here is that sometimes we might have a mess around here. But the best professionals, the most successful people in the world, I've, and I've visited the offices and the home offices of multimillionaires, billionaires, and I can tell you one thing is for sure, 100% of them all are very fastidious. They all keep a very ergonomic, clean office space, a working space. So make sure your environment around you is not distracting. Make sure it's clean, it's tidy, it's organized, it's sorted. And if you are not good at that, hire someone to do it. There's so many people out there. In fact, Netflix has that lady Marie Kondo that talks about cleaning up messes in people's life and getting rid of all the clutter. You might even find someone on Craigslist that could come over to your place. Now, obviously COVID, you might not feel comfortable about that. Sometimes for guys, I would always say for you, gentlemen, please ask a female, whether it's your spouse, your partner, a sister, they're normally a lot more organized than you are and more tidy. Have pay them a couple of bucks, $50, a hundred bucks, and have them help you tidy up your office and make things more presentable. You will feel better. You will close better. You will look more professional. You will feel more like a CEO, a business owner, an entrepreneur, because your environment is clear of clutter. You're able to focus. There's something about the energy. When you got a lot of clutter around you, it says a lot about you. My mentor always says the phrase, how you do anything is how you do everything, which means, if your room's a clutter, maybe your head's a clutter. Maybe your bank account's a clutter. Maybe that's why you're not succeeding. So clear up your environment around you and you will actually come across looking more professional, closing better deals on Zoom. Next, let's say you have to jump on a Zoom that is actually on your phone, not on your computer. Well, the first thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you put on your do not disturb. So you don't get phone calls coming in and interrupting you on the Zoom call. Okay, so once you've got that done, you know, it's one of those things that you put on the back to hold on to the back of the phone. You, you can expand and you can put your hand in and stick it on the back there. We're gonna stick it on. And once it's stuck in there, there's a very simple hack. Now I normally do my Zoom calls. If I have to do a phone and I'm not using my computer, I have this Joby tripod. They're really popular, you know, and I use them for vlogging. I put my vlogging cameras even on it. Uh, they're very robust, they're very sturdy. And I'll show you all the, all the different equipment and hacks in the bottom below later in the video. But I normally will put my phone on it and I will set it up horizontally like this or I'll do it vertically. I can put it on there. However, if you don't have one of those, I'm going to give you a simple hack that you can just use. As long as you have one of these things on the back of your phone, you can go to a dollar store and you can pick one of these things up, right? You don't have to get the ClickFunnels one and you can just pull it out like this. Can you see that? Right? And all you need is a mug, a simple mug and you place it on the mug. And this will actually work really well. You just push it in so it actually holds it, pinches it. There you go. See how it's pinching? It's holding it. And then I put this up on books and now I've got a stand that holds my phone up. It's a perfect thing that you can use. In fact, Angie in her video also talks about the similar hack. I think it was a great idea as well too, because I've been using it for a while. I never knew other people also figured out on that. The next tip I want to give you, if you have the ability to do this as a professional, as a business consultant, a coach or a business owner, one of the most important things that you can do when you're closing, aside from sitting up in your chair and leaning forward like this, putting your hands on the table, is you actually get one of these standing tables. Now I've got one that's actually from Ikea, which I'll post a link in the link below. You guys can see this. I'm just gonna raise the table up. You can see how it's going up here on me. And it changes a lot of the dynamics. Now this chair, I'm gonna just move it out of the way and you'll notice how this changes the dynamics. Now if I'm standing, many times if you're very engaged, if you're speaking, maybe you are giving a presentation, a standing position gives you a lot more power, a lot more posture. It gives you a lot more energy. You're not slouching, you're not sitting down, you're standing away from the table. Some of the things that I can do is I actually can push the table back and notice how it changes my entire setting here. Now, of course, if I have this, I'm gonna lower the table a bit more. I'm gonna lower it so I can close up that space above my head. You wanna make sure you look at your background. Notice how this gives me a little bit more of a presenter feel. Selectively, I'm gonna choose what's on my walls here. I've got paintings on the walls here that I can easily swap out and change. I can actually put my YouTube if I wanted to. I've got other ones for my brand. I've got them all printed. I've got them put into a picture frame. And if I need to, I can just take this picture frame out. I can swap it out. If I push back even further or I change the angle of my table, now there's that chair there, I would obviously get rid of that. But do you see how this changes the dynamics Right? If you are actually at a, a sales presentation and you're speaking to a board, I'd be standing up and I'd be presenting and I'd be bloody hell better be having a nice professional background so that people can see 
that I'm a professional, reads a lot of books, I mean business, I come across clear, my lighting is good, and that's how you get the deal done. Everything makes all the difference. Lastly, turn off any other distractions. Many times for us, we've got other things that are floating around on our, on our, our computer, our desktop. You might have other chats like WhatsApp, Telegram, Slack, you name it, FaceTime. Something might come in. So if you're on an important Zoom call or maybe you're recording a video, turn off all those things. Put on your do not disturb or just close down all those other functions. Close your email. Don't be typing and looking at other things during a Zoom call. This is how you look professional. This is how you can leverage your background. In another video, what I'm going to do as well is I'm going to show you some of my camera equipment, things that I use for a little bit more professional setup here, such as the EOS M50 Mark II. I'll do a whole unboxing, I'll do a setup for you. And I'll show you how you can set up a more professional setup here using more professional lavaliers, using more professional lenses. So you get a nice bouquet defocused background. And if you wanna see that, let me know, comment below. I'll make that video and I'll show you how to set that all up, how to even leverage having an assistant to even create a more professional environment. If you'd love to see that, let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, comment below, hit the smash button, subscribe as I do a lot more of these videos to help professional business consultants, coaches, and business owners to succeed and do better in your business. I'll look forward